you very much for everyone for joining uh, our second day uh, of the conference, of the final conference on the Plastic Free Ocean Project, uh, which is run by CCB, Coalition Clean Baltic and its partners. And on behalf of the CCB, I would like to welcome all of you uh, for the second day of the conference. Uh, my name is Eugenie Labanov. Uh, I'm working for one of CCB members, Center for Environmental Solutions, and also uh, chair of the CCB Working Group on Hazardous Substances and Marine Litter. Uh, I would like to give uh, the floor for welcoming us to Agnieszka Fiska Moshechowska, uh, who is a manager of the Plastic Free uh, Ocean Project. She will introduce uh, the second day to us. Agnieszka. Uh, hello, uh, welcome, and, and I would like to say you about our plan for today. Uh, please tap, uh, switch for the second uh, slide. Uh, we will have today uh, three sessions. Uh, first uh, will be uh, about my uh, influence uh, to the, um, the environment and uh, to the uh, plastic in the ocean and in the uh, which will be uh, ended by uh, breakout rooms. Uh, and then we will have second session, what we can do for plastic the ocean. Uh, and here we will have a debate which will be uh, uh, run by Anna de Sobus. The, the topic of this debate is how to make your community plastic free. And we will finalize uh, our uh, uh, conference with the session about plastic free future. We will think what we can do uh, to get uh, uh, ocean without uh, plastic. And uh, I would like to only uh, notice that uh, all presentations uh, will be recorded. And uh, when you, uh, you don't agree to be uh, recorded, please switch uh, the mode without video. Uh, okay, and uh, and uh, with the discussion in breakout rooms, it will be not recorded. So uh, that's all from my side, and uh, thank you. And uh, yes, Belgeni, you will say who will have uh, the first presentation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Agnieszka. So as you see, we have a very, very intensive and very uh, interesting day ahead of us. I hope that many of you also had a chance to see uh, the story of plastic uh, yesterday or maybe um, before. I think it's really a very good uh, inspiration for everyone who is working on plastic issues. And I really encourage, uh, well, if, you, if you haven't seen, to see it and maybe even to, share, uh, to host the screen for your community because it's really great tool uh, which was developed by uh, by the break free from plastic movement so uh, having said that uh, now we give uh, a floor to our partner from uh, Latvia from green belt Latvia Aya Kauna. hello do you hear me yes right now yes yes hello again uh, dear colleagues uh, uh, I am representing today uh, Latvia's NGO Green Belt. And this time we choose um, just one uh, initiative which we wanted today to share with you uh, among all other initiatives which we uh, performed and uh, uh, we had a very interesting experience. So uh, our experience started with uh, campaign, I start with myself, and uh, it was really very inspiring experience, and we chose this topic just because it was very interesting for us uh, to experience what we can do uh, ourselves. Uh, our personal example as a driving force for others. Why do we talk uh, about plastic problems in Latvia society now uh, when environmental issues are not uh, among priorities and also financial aspects currently are dominating over ecological aspects uh, and also health and security are dominating. So we still talk about necessity to decrease single-use plastic consumption and provide us the better alternatives for daily lifestyle. 
this was a question uh, which we asked ourselves and we thought why do we do that and the answer was for all, most of us that we want to change life for better for better environment for better health so that was our answer uh next slide please and uh, then we chose the, a theme for our contest and it was uh, a Latvia wide uh, uh, contest which we organized for all of Latvian children and young people uh, to act uh, in environmental friendly way. Uh, so we asked them to show uh, that each of us can contribute to reducing the consumption of plastic shopping bags. Uh, also reducing environmental pollution with single plastic waste. And the question they had to ask them what they can do personally. And uh, it was also very interesting for them uh, to work as a designers. So they were asked to use uh, secondary raw materials and inspire maybe in Pinterest or somewhere else and use those materials to design absolutely alternative choices for our single-use plastic bags. And uh, the contest title was I start with myself for cleaner Latvia and it could be also for cleaner Europe for cleaner Baltics. So next slide please. Here was this our used approach with the result it might be one with what we could start each of us. It's personal responsibility about uh, surrounding area around us. So this was the question at what age we should really start uh, changing our habits because we know that each of us are using single use bags. <laughs> Uh, plastic bags and uh, at what age we should start uh, changing this habit for something new and uh, we realized that of course it's much more easier to do it in, in when you are very uh, young uh, but it's never too late and uh, we have learned also from scientific works that it needs at least 21 days to change our habits so uh, we invited those children and uh, also we invite each of our, our participants of the seminar to maybe to try to change those habits for ourselves. And uh, that was also an open question was a change of habits goes together with change of thinking. Next slide, please. So this was, uh, there are pictures of our contest. Uh, we organized uh, this uh, contest in four regions of Latvia and we organized very one big, large uh, Latvia wide event and more than 105, 1,500 uh, design works were submitted. Uh, these design contests were provided in shopping malls and those young people were showing it to all of other consumers. Their personal example is they were telling about why they have chosen uh, one or other material. They were uh, telling uh, their experience uh, about environment, about polluting environment. And actually it was very uh, touching everybody who attended the meeting and the children uh, were telling the stories together with the teacher, together with the parents. And it was like a fashion show. And afterwards, TV interview was uh, saying that it's very inspiring when children are talking to society because they are talking about their future. So teachers were saying that this experience is very inspiring for them to use ideas for future design things, which we can introduce. And here we all learn together that we can live differently. We showed in those contests that we can use secondary raw materials very efficiently and that we are 
already having alternatives to disposable plastic containers, to plastic bags. So children who were participating in this show admitted that it would be good if manufacturers also produced new things from old ones. So invited them to think about it. And uh, our sustainable bag contest, please, next slide. But it was not only uh, the story about bags, it was a story about why we are making the bags as an alternative to single-use plastic. Uh, it was a way to show that there are alternatives available and possible. After this design uh, contest, we had a follow-up of this event. We organized several uh, design, uh, photo, and work exhibitions in the biggest super malls in Latvia. Next uh, slide, please. And the next steps afterwards. Uh, if we have already my own uh, bag, we, uh, we considered that the next step would be social campaign. I have my own coffee mug, shopping bag, water bottle and maybe something else. So we continued with a social campaign in the streets of Riga and Latvia. Uh, please, next uh, slide. And next one. And uh, so these also campaign materials uh, in the form of uh, billboards and large banners were exhibited and uh, they were displayed in more than 300 bus stop shelters uh, in all Riga. Afterwards, in some interviews, uh, we also interviewed people and said how they ever noticed some invitation to think differently and these were the banners they have noticed. So next uh, slide, please. So what we learned from, from all of our, this, this one uh, activity followed by another activity is that there are certain initiatives which seem hopeful. Uh, we choose today to talk about one of these, that our choice is personal initiative and personal initiative as a driving force. But there are also another initiative. So here you can see some of them, that we can integrate environmental innovations in business. We can, we can uh, ask for no need for plastic bag. We can use secondary raw materials. We can um, have a deposit cup systems. So it's just our choice and we should say that we have to show other people that there is a demand for change. Otherwise, there will not be change in any of our countries. Next slide, please. So like I said before, there are solutions. We can still promote zero packaging shopping culture, and we can ask for state support for such green innovations, which might be more expensive. And we, what we need really uh, from all of you, we need strong opinion leader support for significant real changes toward our green revolution. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. I, would not, I will not use your time today because I just wanted to bring this one single idea here that I have to start with myself and it's me who is leading uh, this demand for change. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Aya. Thank you very much, <laughs> Aya. Lisa, can you, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I have some problems when uh, when the presentation, uh, when the uh, screen is shared, then it's some delays with switching on the mic. Yeah, thank you again, Aya. Uh, I think it's a very motivating story uh, of uh, your activities in Latvia, and definitely we, I think, we have to bring a lot of uh, information to our uh, discussions in breakout uh, rooms because I think that this example could be really shared uh, in our countries as well.
So uh, now we have a presentation from Elizaveta Mirinova, friends of the Baltic, uh, a long time um, uh, member of uh, CCD. There is a presentation about uh, tools, engagement tools, which friends of the Baltic use uh, in order to reduce plastic pollution. So 10 minutes, uh, Elizaveta, please. Yes, thank you, Evgeny, for um, this um, uh, small introduction. Uh, I am Elizaveta Merino from France of the Baltic, and uh, I were going to tell about uh, our engagement tools. Next slide, please. And uh, within this project, we did a lot of educational events and materials, and we have a lot of practical results from our work in plastic free ocean. And you can see it briefly on the slide. And uh, with the partners of Plastic Free Ocean, we decided to focus on some successful stories in today. And uh, yesterday, honestly, I were thinking about this a lot, about our successful stories, Friends of the Baltic. And for example, it's the exhibition which is spreading across the Russia right now. And it's really big job, which creates really big attention. And I were thinking also about uh, our marine litter and microplastic monitoring, which gave us a lot of data. And citizen science is really engage people into the problem well. Uh, but uh, I completely changed my mind yesterday and decided to tell another story. Uh, the story that I'm getting more experienced and uh, more knowledge right now. And it's not really a story of great success, but the story of fighting. So next slide, please. A um, little bit about uh, Russian situation right now and history. Uh, Russia began a large scale reform of the waste management system. And uh, it was in 2016. There were ambitious goals and for recycling, for reducing landfills. But of course, implementation uh, failed. And uh, with the first serious intentions to build an incineration plants in Russia, some of Russian environmental NGOs uh, created alliance of public organizations uh, against incineration. And later we uh, joined this alliance. And of course, although the name of alliance is about recycling, we all, all the organization, uh, believe that the main way to reduce waste is prevention. Next slide, please. So in the EU right now, uh, there is a slow moving to abandon incineration and incinerators. Uh, in incinerators, I mean incineration investors here. Uh, they need to sell these uh, good technologies uh, for waste management somewhere. And last year, Russia were actively attracted by these investors with these new technologies. And Russia doesn't have right now any regulation on single-use plastics. And at uh, and the end of last year, government adopted amendments to the legislation that equate waste incineration with recycling. So now incineration is considered as energy recycling, which means that uh, producers can implement requirements of extended producer responsibility by incineration. And moreover, uh, for this construction of uh, incinerators, uh, um, green tariff has been set, and this is a direct subsidies from government to incineration. And uh, in the end of year, we tried to fight, but there were no time and possibility, and these changes were made very quietly, and most of uh, the public um, found out only about it uh, after the adoption. Next slide, please. And uh, the alliance of uh, environmental organizations, we reali realized that we have to do something right now, and we decided to launch a petition. It was launched with the help of state uh, tool, ROI, uh, Russian public initiative, and everyone can launch an initiative, and depending on the level of legislation, different number of votes is needed. So our level is national, and that's why we need 100,000 votes. We know that change org in Russia doesn't work and uh, doesn't have legal power, so we need to talk to the authorities using tool that they approve. 
And it's honestly not just a petition, but the legally verified documents suggesting the exact changes in the basic waste laws in Russia. Uh, firstly, to roll back amendments that equate incineration with recycle, with recycling, and uh, second is uh, introduce ban on production of hard to recycle materials and single use plastics that has a reusable alternative. Um, next slide, please. And uh, we started to fight. Uh, it seems easy to get so many votes in a country with population uh, more than 100 millions, but no. <laughs> in the first week, we published uh, this petition in all our groups from aliens, and we sent it to all familiar mailing lists, and we realized that people vote very little. Because the verification system, it's really very difficult and uh, complicated, but uh, also because we need to uh, distribute it better. And we held a lot of meetings with Allianz, create a strategy for distribution, set a goal for uh, 2,000 votes in a week. And uh, right now, honestly, we're doing well with this uh, because we started to work a lot with eco-community in Russia, whole eco-community regional activists. We started to work with wide audience through influencers and we made a lot of materials for our partners to distribute this petition. Um, next slide, please. But of course, in every story, we have a bad moment. So now it is a counterattack of incinerators, I mean, incineration investors. Uh, voices against the petition began to grow really sharply, uh, like a several hundred per hour. And uh, incinerators, we found uh, they launched an info campaign that incineration is good and solves a lot of waste problems. And they also started to write to eco bloggers in Russia and ask them to publish ads uh, for money. And also on the slide, you can see we found the announcement of the buying votes against our petition for 11 rubles uh, per one voice. So it's uh, like uh, almost nothing less than one euro. So we send a lot of complaints to the website of this instrument, to Russian prosecutor's office. And of course, we didn't have a good answer. Votes against, uh, against um, this petition will be not canceled. And uh, um, the complaints is transferred to lower and lower level of our executive power and we are joking like soon uh, ordinary police officer will knock our door and ask what happened there what do you want and so on so of course incinerators they don't want prevention more single-use plastics more ways to burn more money and next slide please what we have found out from this situation and this story uh, our complaints uh, finally were not very successful, but incinerators stopped and they are not so active right now. And this situation given us an understanding that we need to raise awareness and educate people, really. Because, um, uh, for example, in total, in our alliance uh, groups, uh, communities and social network, we have more than 200,000 uh, people and we need just 100,000 uh, of votes and people really do not vote, although a lot of people now registered on this uh, state instrument because of uh, getting money uh, in connection with COVID. And uh, this situation made us understand that we are doing really a right thing, you know, and we can really influence uh, since incinerators have started to invest money to stop us. And uh, the Russian community is very supportive of, of us uh, right now. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> if to speak about plan, uh, our plan, uh, we will hold a press conference in summer about this petition and we'll work more and more. Now we have, as you can see, uh, 21,000 of votes, but uh, the voting will be until March of the next year. So we have time. And uh, there is still a lot of work to do, but we are slowly but surely moving towards a better future, including thanks to projects such as Plastic Free Ocean. And this makes me really happy and motivated. And next slide, please. Thank you for your attention. I hope I'm on time.
Thank you very much, uh, Elisaveta. And yeah, and thank you very much for uh, bringing this very important topic for us. Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, it's becoming an issue for almost every country around the Baltic Sea. Uh, when it comes to incineration, of course, we, we know that uh, there are countries with a long history of uh, applying this uh, method or this uh, approach to uh, waste management. Um, but unfortunately, there are countries uh, also which face a very, very strong pressure uh, as you mentioned on your, like almost in the beginning of the presentation, uh, from from different European investors and national investors to uh, well to choose um, this option for waste management, and of course for I think for us in CCB it's a, it's a very important topic, and uh, it's also actually a big drive for plastic demand for plastic consumption because uh, plastic is one of the uh, most uh, let's say uh, most valuable. Um, materials for insinuation. So this is very interlinked uh, topics. Okay, so thank you again. And uh, we will have uh, a last presentation in this, uh, in this first block uh, from Estonia, from uh, Stella Neil, uh, representative of uh, Estonian Green Movement. And the uh, presentation will be uh, about uh, motivating actions to eco lifestyle, no plastic challenge. So, Stella, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Let's get a move on. So, hello, everybody. I am Stella Mir from Estonian Green Movement. And uh, we approached uh, how to motivate uh, people to more uh, eco lifestyle by uh, using the no plastic uh, challenge. So the idea of the challenge is that it lasted uh, 10 days. Uh, the last day was for uh, self-reflection and it was held in Facebook and email because not everybody is in Facebook. And the theme, uh, the whole theme was about uh, microplastic. And the uh, participants uh, get to solve all kinds of challenges, like uh, matching uh, movies and videos, something simpler, or uh, self-reflection, like uh, they get to see uh, what uh, beauty products uh, they use that contain microplastic, or uh, what are the clothes made out of, uh, how much uh, microfibers come from there and how to like cook without uh, plastic packaging, like uh, all sorts of that. And uh, the results uh, that the particip participants got, uh, they posted on Facebook or sent by email. So that, that's, the, that's how they got to win prizes. So the themes. So uh, on all days, we uh, focused on different parts of the problem of uh, microplastic like uh, how it affects our health, uh, why is it in uh, the beauty products, uh, how to shop uh, plastic free and uh, what is like uh, microplastic going on. Uh, so each day, uh, also with the, according to the theme, uh, we shared the tasks that they have to solve and it had to be more than two because uh, not everybody was from uh, Tartu or Tallinn. Uh, most uh, and some some participants were from uh, rural areas, so they might not they might not have a good internet uh, connection to watch a movie, or they don't have uh, stores nearby, so they can go and see what are their options to buy without plastic. Uh, so we had to think about uh, for something for everybody. And they uh, sent the, their results by email or they posted it on Facebook. And it turned out like uh, uh, there were all levels of eco-friendly people. Somebody who just uh, started and they are all new to this uh, site. And uh, some people were like into this and some like uh, they haven't used the plastic bags in 10 years or something like that. So um, as you can see, uh, 
uh, some uh, really went uh, into this uh, topic and they reflected uh, how it affected their life and uh, what new did they learn and also like uh, asked the people what uh, uh, what should they do like they have some problem what are the good alternatives and uh, people responded really well and they um, uh, they uh, discussed uh, the solutions like the, why not use coconut butter because it uh, destroys your sink or something. And what are the other alternatives for cocoa butter? Okay, my screen uh, froze for a second. I'll start again. So we were here and now we are there. Okay. Yes, so uh, all of them get to share their experience and get answers and feedbacks and also uh, new ideas. Uh, for example, like uh, how to make your own deodorant, it uh, came a big deal and what are alternative uh, products or companies that you should uh, look out for or uh, what are the dangers of uh, greenwashing, like uh, what companies do that and what uh, not to fall for. And, um, and it's all really like easy uh, steps to take, but also this uh, challenge, uh, challenge uh, gave like this uh, motivation to, to for for beginners to start and look into more of this uh, eco-friendly lifestyle and what are like the easiest steps that they can take and also like uh, uh, have these materials and new ideas to go on from and also what we did is uh, we uh, gave out prizes every day for all the people who answered and all of the companies that we work with were eco-friendly or plastic uh, because of the theme for example there's a small Estonian student company that makes solid shampoos and doesn't wrap them in plastic. So uh, people like uh, got to experience more of this uh, side of Estonia. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stella, uh, for this very good and very interesting experience from Estonia. Uh, I think we have, um, uh, let me check, uh, well, basically we don't have a lot of time, but maybe uh, if, uh, if someone has some questions, um, I think we can allow ourselves to ask maybe one or two uh, questions to participants. So please uh, raise your hand or uh, write in the chat uh, if you do have any uh, question to speakers. Actually, I have a question to Aya. Uh, do you have any statistics about uh, consumption, uh, consumption of production of uh, single-use bags? So just to try to estimate what was the uh, impact of your campaign, because your campaign seems to be uh, quite, a, well, quite a massive campaign for, um, for Latvia. So is it possible actually to track changes in, uh, in, in consumption behavior? Well, you know, official statistic uh, uh, this year said that there's a decrease of consumption in the single-use plastic, mm -hmm. but just not because of the unit but just because uh, it has been become lighter, those bags which we are using are much more milligrams lighter. So that's why the usage in tons of plastic have been decreased. But this doesn't mean that the use of plastic bag has decreased. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
And uh, maybe also a quick question to Lisa. Well, of course, it's not a <laughs> very quick question, but maybe if you could just be short in your answer. What kind of, I don't know, what kind of help or uh, what kind of participation from partners uh, abroad, uh, outside of Russia, uh, would you well, would you like to see in order to support your, uh, your campaign against incineration? Thank you for the question, Evgeny. Uh, honestly, I don't know because like uh, not Russian people cannot vote. Uh, mm -hmm. Only Russian verified people can vote. So maybe it can be helpful really to create a big media attention about these problems uh, right now, like to support our alliance and say that uh, Russian environmentalists is uh, asking for your help. Please uh, pay attention to this problem and so on. Do you know if uh, if any of, uh, of plant incinerators will be, uh, should be built in the Baltic Sea region? Uh, um, maybe two weeks ago, uh, it was like a new plan with more than 100 of incinerators, but I didn't watch it yet, so I <laughs> will do okay. it later and check. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, it's uh, my uh, we, my organization in this project uh, making different activities, but I told about one, I think it's good experience. One of activity, it's um, our activity presentation for um, our experience with local uh, cost municipality. Uh, project uh, place, uh, oh, next please. Project place was uh, uh, in uh, Jurmala, its biggest uh, coastal zone municipality. It's Kurort. It's uh, 24 kilometers long beach, and um, in this territory, it's uh, uh, no. It's uh, very seasonally. It's uh, summer. It's many many people, and uh, and uh, autumn. It's uh, autumn and winter se season not so many people and uh, name of campaign was uh, whatever you buy or taste ma make no waste uh, you see this is example of one of uh, our um, uh, no it's uh, like a uh, table like a table study it's we producing in three languages uh, no one one study with three part uh, uh, latvian um, uh, russian and english because it's most uh, public is tourists and and and, and uh, speaking it's of course in, the, in these three languages it's uh, yes ne, ne. Yeah, a campaign. Yes, Jurmala. It's uh, it's um, uh, you see it's uh, uh, it's uh, aim of campaign. It's uh, uh, to enc en encourage to reduce the use of single plastic uh, products to promote the introduction of, of environmental friendly habits and. Uh, and uh, target group was um, uh, cafeterias, uh, beach cafeteria, tourism information centers, museum, all local tourism place in infrastructures. Yes, next. Yes, uh, activity we we uh, conducted a social survey. It's uh, approximately uh, twenty eight questions for for public service providers, yes, interviewed and use uh, single, about uh, single use plastics, um, uh, opinion of pollution the coastal territory or, and uh, about opinion of plastics and uh, we, we, to, inter, to possibility to using alternatives, so, yes. Yes, activity. You see, this uh, it look like it's one of uh, place who get uh, first first um, place. It's we 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 give all all uh, cafeterias, uh, tourism center this uh, statue. It's uh, it was very popular. This table stands. Yes, and and. Um, and people, uh, we before the start reaction, we discuss with our or, or uh, no, 
or or uh, uh, target groups and and then give this uh, this uh, stand yes <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, activities yes uh, uh, it's uh, inform about the principle of uh, in environmental friendly behavior in the context of their activities. Uh, one of uh, one part of this activity is to support from Yurmala municipality because uh, Yurmala municipality have a, a blue flag. Okay. And yes, conclusions. Uh, we, when we public services, we discuss long period and problems uh, should be approached with the issue of single-use pl plastic and the important word issue should be explained and discussed. Uh, all the respondents uh, uh, wait more support from a municipality be uh, because it's um, it's uh, possible to use in deposit glasses, but uh, plastic because its main uh, group was uh, was a uh, beach cafeterias and beach ca beach cafeterias uh, not possible to using uh, 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 glass uh, glass uh, uh, glass <laughs> from uh, glasses because it's uh, have a have a it's not safety uh, and other is uh, and other is. Uh, mm, Main problem of all beach cafeterias have a water problem. Yes, it's hy hygiene problem because uh, not possible to wash to wash. And uh, but it's a very, very, very in, in Yurmala. It's very important point. We are producing many, many one time single use glasses. Yes, and um, yes, it's uh, Yurmala municipality was. Um, blue flag because it's uh, in a city we we using many many places possible to using to sort uh, sorting containers but uh, haven't uh, this sorting containers in beach territory and uh, yes each uh, each uh, morning uh, clean up uh, clean up uh, uh, beach but but have a main problem uh, in the we are organize uh, uh, cleanup action in 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 autumn and spring and uh, and uh, main problem now starting it's cigar cigarette butts uh, because uh, it's uh, it's very very serious beach uh, pollution because other other things it's a uh, municipality cleanup but uh, cigarette butts it's a uh, big problem because it's uh, uh, it's not legal in 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 a beach to 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 using yes, but but people uh, not no using in some somewhere some some small some steps uh, in 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 bushes or other, and and now it's very big problem uh, in 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 uh, Yurmala and after. Uh, winter uh, storm it's all to go to to water yes it's uh, and uh, for for us very interesting it's many many this beach cafeterias it's uh, said yes we want to sort uh, sort uh, uh, waste not not only uh, not only uh, put out yes next yes yes thank you it's maybe some question it's uh, yes i think for um, us it was very good experience to working with municipality it's what want municipality what want uh, others company and yes it's it's all if maybe some question thank, i understand th thank you very much thank yes. you very much elita and thank you for your colleagues uh, who are working on this um, uh, activities in latvia i think we will have two more presentations before there will be opportunity uh, to ask maybe one or two questions but definitely it's a very uh, good experience of working specifically with municipalities so, so thank you very much 
Uh, with that, I would like to go to, to the next presentation, environmental activities between generations to beat plastic pollution, and it will be experienced from our uh, project partners in uh, Ukraine, uh, from the Western Center of World Laboratory, Petra uh, Hritishin and Adrian Hritishin. Uh, please. Can I, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay, one minute. Yes. Yes. Hi, everyone. And uh, we want to present our vision of the plastic problem. Yes. And um, the emergence uh, of plastic in our lives in the second uh, half of the 20th century is like a significant scientific and technological achievement. Uh, but today, uh, plastic waste is a problem because it um, makes uh, our society vulnerable. Um, that means that um, it makes uh, society incapable uh, of resisting the risk of uh, turning on ocean and uh, nature pollution like into a planetary catastrophe. But uh, such an obvious danger of plastic uh, for humanity raises questions for many people. Uh, in particular, it's uh, the first one, why is the production of plastic products increasing and it doesn't cause uh, alarm and active action of governments? Why are no radical management decisions made that would prevent the threats or minimi minimize the risk of their occurrence? And the third one is why are the danger of plastic pollution so difficult to understand in societies of both, the, both developed and the third, third world, world countries? And uh, looking for answers to these questions with people interested in solving environmental problems, we must be aware of our own and each of us role in this process. And communicating, communicating with uh, groups of people of different ages distinguishes different visions and uh, awareness uh, of their place in approaches to solving the problem of growing like water pollution by plastic. Each uh, generation has, has its own uh, unique features due to the era, social norms, and uh, like technologies. Yes, and um, the generation of 15 and 17 years uh, from the last century, they um, uh, mentally gives uh, priority to the economy of society. The solution uh, to the problem of plastic waste pollution is seen by them like uh, at the level of government and management institutions. Yes, and uh, like representative of this uh, generation in the world today are the one of who, uh, ones, uh, like who mainly make both political and uh, governmental uh, decisions. And it's difficult uh, to them to understand, for them to understand the approaches uh, like to the balanced uh, development of society mentally from the standpoint of serving nature. And like it's important for young people that information support for the reliability of plastic problems, it's analyzes like from different resources. And creation by them of fashionable behavior uh, and of an image of concerning uh, minimization of plastic pollution and uh, of environment. And uh, the generation of school children, they are interested in, uh, in, in environmental issues and uh, Creatively, they're expressing their position and vision. Um, like it perceives the greening of public life mentally in harmony with the nature. System uh, situation with uh, COVID-19 shows that uh, the use of plastic for disposable products has significantly increased the risk of uh, plastic accidents. And uh, uh, Today, young people says that the brand is uh, defining their rights to protect the environment, holding campaigns, demanding the government and business to create conditions to like prevent uh, plastic pollution, like uh, participation in uh, campaign day without plastic, uh, international day of propellant packaging and uh, disposable plastic utensils. 
Yes, and um, like the main question, are young people ready to, ready to use less plastic in their uh, daily life? Yes, we are struggling with the consequences of this problem of plastic and we need to find an alternative to solve this problem. We are ready to reduce the use of plastic in their everyday life, but there must be an alternative. Part uh, of this problem is that the plastic alternative, it's not widely advertised uh, and it's not used by the media for uh, distribution. Yes, and uh, with the growing uh, influence of social networks in uh, the life of modern yons, uh, yos, it became clear that this is the easiest way to convey the ideas of such uh, plan to them. And thanks uh, like for, to the creation of artificial trends uh, uh, through the broad information campaigns that it, it is possible to create a wave of like a hype on en en environmental issues and especially on the topic of uh, like excess excessive excessive uh, use of plastic. Yes, and um, what the alternative for plastic do we have? In our opinion, a common uh, alternative for people of different generations to behave as plastic products may be the ideology of pollution preva prevention and waste minimization, and which is based, based on like such principles. It's the first one. Everyone should take care of the purity of water from plastic pollution on the planet, uh, regardless of whether he lives on the land, by the river, by the sea, or by the ocean. And like uh, as a good servant would do, realizing himself not owner, but only the, the one of those to whom the land is um, like a temporary entrust for life. So the second one is we must not only protect the environment in which we live, but manage life in it responsibly. And we must serve it. Uh, to serve, it means to build a balanced relationship with nature, which is a place to live and which must be preserved and uh, nurtured for future uh, future generations who will live on the planet. And uh, like to, to the finish, I can say this uh, ideology can become a common uh, like understanding for people of different generations of how to live and how to behave in nature, overcoming and abstractness on, of the relationship with uh, nature which justifies inactions to reduce the threat of plastic disaster. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adrian, for, for this deep thoughts and uh, <laughs> your, your approach and um, your work to involve people of different ages into, into plastic, uh, plastic prevention work. And we have a third presentation in this session. Uh, our colleagues from Lithuania, from Lithuanian Fund for Nature, uh, Indra Tsaidata. Uh, this organization works a lot with uh, uh, public engagement, uh, awareness raising, education, and uh, she'll present uh, about, uh, about their approaches on how to make environmental education enthusiastic, creative, and fun. Indra, please. Yes, I will share my screen. Yes. Do you see well? Okay. So, yeah, thank you again for your introduction. Yes, I'm Indra from Finia from Panetia, and one of uh, our main Mm, activities and activities that I really like and enjoy doing is mm, environmental education and of course oh 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 hmm. okay so, you're on the wrong slide you have to go to the first slide <laughs> Oh, um, yes, of course. <laughs> and now, <laughs> so thank you. So, of course, uh, very short, uh, Vinay von Panich, of course, in the project Plastic Free Ocean did a lot of different things and the environmental education was just one part, but that part that I really enjoy doing and 
see meaning and our organization have some experience with, with engaging people. So just a little list about what main lectures, public events and so on we did. So it's a different kind. A municipality conference, just private events, public events, uh, just uh, asking some municipalities to talk uh, and even uh, schools. So yeah. And I divided just like three groups uh, that it's very specific and you need to work with them in little specific ways. So lectures, of course, ch children in schools and lectures for them, lectures at events, that audience is young families, locals and city guests, it's another approach, and lectures for a specific group or listeners. So, so yeah, and I really like, um, talking with children and trying to explain the huge environmental problem through fourth graders and fifth graders. And it's very interesting and try, I always try to adapt my presentation, adapt my lectures for them because they're very energetic. They uh, like col colorful things and some funny little, Things. So when I talk, I try to uh, include some games, in, even in the slides. During the lectures, we play games like uh, how long does the great plastic product to microplastic and their uh, very interesting uh, time uh, conception sometimes. So <laughs> it is interesting answers. Of course, when we talk uh, about most like they need to be introduced what is like even micro microplastic or micro micron so we talk about this like oh it is the size more than size little than a size on one hair strand and if you see you and they are touching their hair seeing yeah it's very small so every time you need to adapt and every time you need to take some I don't know very creative way to engage them because then then they engage they're very active they're very interested so even sometimes you need to search internet to use some memes even because they are used to that and they are used to be in that kind of playful way so so i use yeah sometimes it's funny for me but but it works because we are seeing it and oh okay yeah yeah it's it's funny and we talk and um, when we uh when we have the lectures for adults of course the discussion is like very seriously and, and uh, like demanding i really like discussion with children and sometimes we have discussion about what do you think about balloons okay balloons is like environmental <laughs> plastic pollution problem and, and so on and and do you think your birthday will be um, like more bad or not fun if you not use balloons and they are starting to discussion and the discussion sometimes is very very interesting then you see how they think from young age even with the straws and so on so like this one in lectures in school I tried, of course, with like 11th grade and you very young adults, you talk differently, you, know, you not use memes or so, so on, but but like younger generation, younger children, they, they like that fun popping and, and it, it works to engage and then they engage, it's very fun. And I really like practical activities, what you can touch, what you, what you can see, what you can, because when people see, uh, they are more motivated to learn. So if we can, we have expedition, huge scientific expedition to the near water's body. And they are scientists and we are going to take a sample and look for microplastic. And I let them do everything. So they choosing location where the sample will take. They discussing where it's a better and so on. Another group is counting liters, how many liters we will filter and how many liters we should filter to see the microplastic. Another group is uh, try to find um, sources of pollution and they are looking around, writing down and so on. 
so after that uh, we can look uh, uh, through microscope and see the problem and that small world we didn't see in school sometimes because not in all biology uh, lessons we have like practical activities so they are very amazed and they are very interested and they are playing with the microscope of course sometimes their experiment and water sampling is not always good you need to be prepared with some samples to show them if something goes wrong but it's not that idea the idea is to engage them and 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 to be more like with them and not uh, and lead discussion in their way because they have a lot to tell and they have very very interesting insight in the family habits so so yeah and another interesting uh, our approach and our group like lectures at the public events because it's very very different from lecture in a school or just in private lesson or so on because audience is uh, changing constantly constantly changing you have 15 minutes with one people 15 minutes with another people and you have young families you have locals you have uh even seniors so you need to be very uh fluid you need to have a lot of material different material materials and of course uh main thing when we go into the local uh some events public local events uh, we need to discuss their local problems because from that starting point we can jump for the bigger problem and it's easier just step by step to engage them okay how's recycling do you recycling how's recycling in your city and there goes on and you can just uh, hop hop and you and then you ask and what do you think about the plastic pollution do you think about microplastic and so on so start from their point of view they, they, they come another way of course i uh, always have my microsoft water samples and it's a very good tool because uh parents want to talk about serious issues about even zero waste movement and so on and children want to do something because they are active so i show them that water samples show how to use microscope it's a very good tool just to break some and give space some when i educating like parents and we're talking discussion discussion and always like by the rule after that parents asking oh can i look to the microscope because they're seeing that children is very very motivated and seeing a lot of things and asking so so always it's interesting to see that dynamic change because parents is more strict okay so what you thought okay so talking about like serious topic and then they're being playful with their children so it's very nice to to do of course when you go to the public event you need to be ready to talk about current situation because in Lithuania we have some big uh, problem then from wastewater treatment a lot of microplastic and plastic small plastic particles was released in the Rizri river and of course, when you have public event, you have a lot of question about that. You need to be prepared and you need to be active in that way. Because when you, like I said, when you start talking what is happening in Lithuania, what is happening in like in our river, we can jump on and talk about the solution and bigger problem. So I have like in this situation, I have samples to show people what kind of plastic was released and what the problem was about, what we can do, and what wasn't do, did what <laughs> what wasn't do good enough. So so yeah, when the public event, you need to be ready to be very fluid and prepared to the local uh, problems and solutions. And from that point, you can jump to the talks, the bigger problem. Uh, and lectures for specific target groups, like I have very interesting uh, lecture in art beauty school, cosmetic schools and masseuse, and they're working with a lot of cosmetics and they want to ask me to talk about plastic pollution and microplastic because they're one of their um, uh, teachers was in my lectures for, for another event. They she think that. And I started, of course, okay, I think, if I jump from just big point of view about plastic and plastic pollution and how we even reduce it, it not be key 
moment for them because they are learning about cosmetics and so on. So I have always have my filtrate. You see the pictures. It's the same bottle, and I filtered plastic from from uh, shower gel. So you can see a mouth of it and their starting point. So after this lecture, we have very interesting discussion with they took all their cosmetics and looking for uh, microplastic in their products using and we discuss what if you find what you will do if you uh, re refuse to use this, this, uh, some, uh, this materials and so on. So uh, Yes, another interesting lecture was I do not have sorry pictures because I was alone, so was was wasn't to prepare uh, to photo with older generation. It was very interesting because they have their different point of view, like uh, Petro said, if I uh, correctly remember a name and. In my opinion, in my experience, sometimes in elderly and seniors, you have two groups. One is very motivated and very learned to listen, and another is, okay, it's not our problem. No, no, no. But it was very interesting to see that even seniors uh, was prepared with refusing single-use uh, plastic bags and sewing plastic, sewing bags from uh, leftover curtains and showing me and just saying, oh, look, what, what. So, so yeah, so main point, I think I don't have enough time. So I in this presentation, I want to show our approach, like how we adapt materials, how we try to be, uh, on the point with every single audience and how we try to engage children, how we try to engage young families, how we try and engage a lot of different uh, people in different ways, but for the main one reason. And, and sometimes it works, we are learning and we are trying our best and learning from you today is but very nice to see a lot of presentation about different initiatives and and so I'm very proud to be a part of the project and do something for her. So, okay, I don't know how much time it is, but I think it's enough. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you very much, Indra. And uh, yeah, I think it's very, very good example of uh, of education activities. And perhaps you are you are really uh, a pioneer in uh, within our project on uh, on this engagement and education. And I encourage everyone uh, from participants really to learn from um, from experience of um, uh, Lithuanian Fund for Nature on this area. Before we have, uh, before before we will have a moderated debate, maybe just uh, one or two um, quick questions to presenters. Uh, I remind that we had a presentation of uh, Alita uh, from Latvia, uh, Adrian from Ukraine, and now we've got a presentation of Indra. So maybe if uh, someone from participants uh, would like to. Um, just for some clarification or any question or maybe immediate comment? Yes, maybe I would like to ask a question. We will discuss it uh, discuss it little bit later, but uh, I would like to know your opinion. Uh, with experience of your work, uh, how do you think what can be next steps for your work in your countries? It's the question for all speakers who were presenting already presentations. Someone wants to answer? I Indra? maybe, yeah, I just little comment. I think I thought very um, intensively about the future and how uh, our education can be more successful. Of course, first of all, uh, we can use social media now very useful too and tool we see a lot that that works and it can be used for some target groups it's very sadly that now we have a little bit chaos in the world with COVID-19 and a lot of public events are cancelled so we need to figure out how to engage people in different way I think we need to think together how we can do different things 
for same purpose. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, more and more we need to uh, connect different target groups like children and elderly because we have can have very interesting discussion and different points of view. So maybe and include a lot of uh, what I try always include more regions regional because in big cities you have a lot of information you have a little bit more dynamic and in regions we have a little bit stubborn like, like even teachers sometimes want to educate because they don't know about problem so maybe that points some points for the future okay uh, thank you very much Indra uh, we've got one more question from um, uh, from Victoria Kalach. Uh, uh, it's I think it's a rather general question. Uh, is it possible to refuse plastic in spite of the economic component? Uh, in your opinion, uh, does anyone from from speakers would like to to refer to this uh, question? Com yes, I think it's uh, very important. Uh, common works to some legislation it's like a, not only free uh, no it's uh, free but it's uh, it's maybe it's more uh, legislation it's uh, environmental taxes more if using in in in, in a single use plastic and it's need to 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 vote uh, uh, producers uh, to to producing more uh, many time uh, mm -hmm. using glasses uh, uh, deposit glasses yes it's for for I see it's a coastal zone for example yes and and other because I listen in Tallinn will be this year I don't don't know so good it. Uh, it's a zero free, free zero waste festival zone. I listen, for example, yes, it's. But mm -hmm. it needs support working with municipality or or, or legislation level. Uh, need to uh, work with uh, support from from uh, officer official institution. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lita. And we have one more question from Nils uh, from Nabu. Nils, please. Um, yes, hello. I'm I'm Niels. I work with NABU, and I uh, have not uh, attending the session yesterday, but my colleague David Fender was was here. Um, I have one question, one comment. I did not quite understand during the Yastania project. Have you tried reu uh, reusable systems in uh, in this uh, project setting? And um, then uh, you did say uh, that uh, the um, w one of the main obstacles or arguments for using uh, single use stuff was um, um, hygienic uh, uh, issues, because from our perspective, the um, hygienic issues were before Corona a common argument uh, against um, the introduction of reusable and deposit systems. Rather, rather it is often not. Um, yeah, uh, the, the question about liability issues that could arise from uh, hygiene problems uh, is the the more. Is, 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 is the, the, the bigger obstacle. And the comment is a Corona virus makes communication uh, more difficult than ever before concerning deposit systems and um, yeah, mm, yeah uh, and, and uh, refund systems and so on. Uh, and um, it deprives us as NGOs of options for governmental control, uh, for, for lobbying for governmental control me uh, mechanisms like uh, vet reliefs, uh, because they are used for reasons of Corona crisis management um, uh, now. And so 
um, yeah, so 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 we we are we are out of of, of business to 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 lobby mm -hmm. for things like that. Um, yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my 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 comments so so far, uh, and maybe I can share a link with you concerning um, a project where we tried out uh, refund systems at the beach in Germany on Fehmarn Island. So yes, please. In German, it's in, in German only, but maybe as, as some of you are, are able to tr uh, to translate and to, um, to to read. And if there mm -hmm. are any questions, you can come back to me and write me a mail or mm -hmm. kind of a phone. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Niels, um, for this well, for, for for your opinion and for sharing with. Um, with us about your uh, experience uh, and with that I think we will move to uh, Anna uh, Disogos uh, who will be the moderator for a debate about how to make your community plastic free. Uh, well, uh, originally it was only um, I think two participants in the debate but um, I, I, I feel that many many of us will be able also to, to share uh, experience and uh, participate in this discussion. We should have uh, 25 minutes uh, and I, I, I really ask Anna to uh, uh, to moderate as well and to, to keep up uh, the time because uh, we're a little bit uh, already uh, taking more time uh, during this morning session. So Anna, are we still yours. okay with the 25 minutes though? Yeah, can we do well, that? If you, if, you, if you can make it in 20 minutes, I think it would be. Even. Okay, okay, let's, let's aim for 20 minutes then. Thanks very much, Evgeny. Evgeny will now have a break from moderating and he will sit in the chair of being a panelist in this uh, conversation, I would say, because obviously with 20 minutes, we're not going to have a massive debate, but we hope it, it, it is going to be useful to you. So uh, welcome, Evgeny, as a panelist on this uh, uh, panel. Uh, probably no further introduction needed for those who participated either yesterday or today from uh, the morning. Evgeny Lobanov represents Center for Environmental Solutions, where he is the director and he's based in Minsk, Belarus. And our second guest and panelist in this short conversation uh, is from Poland. Um, and that is Dominika Wojcieszek, head of education at the Gdynia Aquarium. Dominika, if you can switch on your camera and microphone. Um, yep. Hi, my camera is on and my Great. microphone is on as hi. well. So Hi. hopefully everyone can see and hear our uh, panelists. So my name is Anna Dezogus. I uh, work, uh, I'm self-employed and work as embassy of the Clean Planet, Ambassador Czyste Planety in Poland here in Gdańsk. Um, and the subject of our uh, conversation is how to make our communities plastic free. Uh, so generally actions around plastic pollution reduction in communities. Obviously, we've spoken a lot about the systemic issues and systemic actions yesterday, and the film, once again, definitely stresses the need uh, on systemic action. And David, yesterday from Center for Environmental um, International Law, Chill. also uh, spoke about the big international treaties and the legal tools we need. But there is also the space for community action. And as we've seen in today's presentations, uh, many of the NGOs, if not all of the NGOs uh, involved in uh, the project uh, have and are taking all these various community-led actions. So what we want to focus on in this conversation is to try to get as much out of Evgeny and Dominika from their experience to not only for them to tell us about their projects, because we already had a few presentations and we know what kind of projects are out there in different countries, but so we can really learn from their, their experience about both positive and negative elements, challenges, successes, and uh, so on. Um, so I think I would like to start you off maybe with a very positive question. Can you, in like two or three minutes, share uh, a community activity that your organization was involved in or led that was a success? And what do you think was the main element that made it a success? 
So obviously, yes, three minutes, you, you will not be able to tell us about the whole project, but if you could kind of show what element can make a community action successful, what was it in the case of the example you will choose? Whoever is ready first. Um, should I start? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, well, hi again. Um, I guess as the aquarium, since we do a lot of education uh, and we do community outreach, outreach in, in our um, education programs, uh, we organize a lot of events in which uh, we sort of directly talk to people in the community because during our events, we mostly have people from the Tri-City area coming to the aquarium or coming whichever event we're at because sometimes we are guests at other events. And so then we have a lot of people coming in from all over Tri-City and, and smaller towns around here. Um, and so we have a lot of direct conversations with people about plastic and about trash. Um, and one of the, I believe, successful maybe teaching methods is that we have um, this, well, it's hard to call it an aquarium. We call it a washing machine. It's a big a plastic container with water that at the aquarium we use it as a tank for um, jellyfish so it has a circulation of water that goes uh, that circulates uh, you know up and down and then we use it at our events um, with plastic inside instead of jellyfish and so then people can see um, how how trash and plastic circulates in the water and how it looks like jellyfish. And so, well, it's maybe not a project, but it's like, a, it's a very powerful method of showing, you know, how plastic bags look like jellyfish in the water. And I feel that when we have this big tank with water and plastic at our events, this is a very powerful message and very powerful picture that people see. And I think that they react, especially that we have there, like a lot of, uh, household plastics like um, toothpaste uh, uh, tubes that you know that you dispose and you think I throw it in a trash but then it may end up in the ocean um, so I think it's it, it people react to this and I think that's um, that's a very good method yeah, to so, yeah 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 um, Thanks. So that's really strong. So that's strong visual and practical and tangible uh, example. So the fact that you're not just telling about it, but that they can actually see how yes. in the ocean it can appear to animals. So that, that makes exactly. it successful in kind of communicating and, and people engaging with it. Yes, definitely. Right. And yeah. um, sorry, I don't know how, how I'm doing on time. Uh, 2.30. So I would say okay. we go over to Evgeny. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Well, uh, I think it's, for us, it's crucial uh, to really uh, understand the needs of, uh, of local communities with whom we're working uh, on, uh, well, on plastic production or on switching from uh, single use to reusables and etc. because, uh, well, for example, we are working with some schools and we uh, established a network of schools without plastic. And one of the uh, key drivers for us to engage with schools was, uh, was the fact that in uh, primary schools, uh, school pupils, they are often, well, basically they are forced to uh, use single use cups and bottled water uh, well, for, 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 for drinking. So basically they are not allowed to, uh, to use a tap water or to use some um, they, they, they own water from uh, from home and well it's uh, it's a kind of um, uh, like cultural issue and uh, uh, also it's uh, driven by uh, not really by requirement by uh, let's say advices from uh, sanitary services that uh, the, safety, the safety should be first so um, maybe uh, this reusable cups will not be uh, very clean and etc but it's actually a very good educational tool and very good educational situation for 
uh, for pupils. So we started to work with um, uh, teachers um, and uh, class leaders in these classes, and then with parents to uh, to explain that basically, if your uh, if your children will uh, wash properly uh, the disposable cups, if they bring water in. Um, in their own bottles with them, it's well, it's completely fine and it's safe. And uh, now we have, uh, I think, around 15 schools which uh, introduce uh, educational lessons for the small children uh, who developed uh, their own posters to encourage um, uh, children and pupils um, uh, to use their own re reusable cups. Uh, they're happy to uh, share the experience some school conferences and events and for us it's i mean we we are, we are trying to uh, to find out this very narrow very concrete uh, point where we can actually uh, step in and provide some solutions and well from our experience almost in every community you could find this very uh, narrow point uh, and then you can start your own story mm -hmm. so you would say that what really drives the success is obviously understanding very well the particular needs of the particular community and going in with a project that is very much suited rather than, okay, we've seen that over in Latvia they're doing this, yeah. let's do it here. Yeah, well. I think it's, it's crucial really to assess the needs of, uh, of the community. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thanks for that. Uh, actually in Poland, I think most of the schools well, I'm not sure if in all cities, but many of the schools have like taps where kids are encouraged to just drink in reusable bottles from these taps. But I guess the big difference here was the official advice and the official line on quality of water from the tap. Yeah, that is an obstacle. Yeah, it was actually also a situation in, in our case and I think in, 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 in other former Soviet Union countries when like 20 years ago, it was also like a natural uh, situation when people used uh, as a step water, they had this water fountains and mm -hmm, et cetera. But mm -hmm. then uh, like single use plastic bottles arrived. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, moving on to, to the next question and uh, to some more examples from your activities. Um, I would like to ask you what kind of challenges or obstacles have you experienced in building your projects with communities? Are communities generally open and happy or is it local authorities? Is it like, have you ever had a project that had a particular obstacle or challenge and that you managed to uh, overcome or not? Um, so I wonder if generally you have a similar scope and size of projects or if uh, uh, sometimes you, you can experience some problems and if so, then what kind of problems uh, for us to kind of learn maybe what to keep in mind uh, from your experience in community actions as well. Mm. Oh, I could start if you want. Um, well, of course, uh, we're facing many challenges and uh, one story, for example, um, we're working with one uh, canteen uh, which provides, um, which provides uh, like uh, dinners and lunches for, uh, for homeless people. And uh, usually, usually uh, it is attended by approximately 90 to 120 people per day. And uh, for, for quite some long period of time, approximately for three years, they were using uh, single use uh, uh, tableware because it was uh, like easier for them. Uh, it was not actually cheaper, but it was, uh, it was just easier. And then we started to work with them to, to switch uh, this practice into uh, usage of uh, like uh, reusable uh, tableware, reusable dishes and etc. So we, uh, we bought this uh, equipment, then we also installed uh, uh, necessary dish washing uh, machine. Um, we did some uh, education and uh, like a session to explain why we're doing it for staff of the canteen. So everything looked good, uh, but then, for example, when uh, when the situation with COVID uh, arrived, uh, uh, of course, they decided that uh, well, safety for them is uh, most important, and uh, 
uh, it's difficult um, to explain people uh, that actually proper dishwashing is also um, absolutely fine uh, in terms of safety and then uh, they just uh, immediately switched again to uh, to single use dishes and now we're like uh, trying uh, to work back um, uh, the situation and uh, actually uh, we 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 also seen some other like uh, I would say ordinary uh, cafes and restaurants um, uh, which try to to use for example the situation with uh, with pandemia uh, to come back to uh, single use cups because for them it's just simply easier and um, I think that here is a very important uh, point for us that we really need to work with the demand. So we need to work with uh, consumers, we need to work with public, because uh, unless uh, many, many people just demand that we would like to have a reu reusable cup in your cafe, uh, the cafe itself, um, perhaps for them it would be uh, not enough motivation just to, mm -hmm. you know, to think from environmental perspective. So here is, um, for example, wow, one example of our... Um, yeah, uh, maybe so you not. definitely touched on the big obstacle we're currently probably all facing with how people perception changes in face of the pandemic and how they think that plastic is more hygienic and better. And yet yesterday we heard uh, during the presentations as well that actually to, uh, uh, to get the virus through surfaces is very unlikely and if from surfaces then plastic is the worst surface because that's where the virus stays the longest so if you actually look at, at the research uh, it it is much safer to have a dishwasher with a certain high temperature that definitely uh, makes the the dishes uh, clean and safe uh, dominica mm. would you like to say something about either the current obstacle uh, we're facing with COVID, or from the past uh, of your project something that you found challenging in some way in community projects? Uh, yes, well, I definitely agree that there is that, that big obstacle that we have to fight all the time is that plastic is simply convenient. And so that's the big thing that we need to fight and explain to people like, yes, you will need to put in the work to wash your dishes or, you know, to prepare your, your buffet or whatever. Uh, but yes, we also do have uh, some problems when it when it comes to simply, you know, human communications, when you're working on a project, you usually have at least a couple, if not more, um, institutions or people involved in the project, especially if you're trying to work with a community. Uh, and for example, right now, we are collaborating with Amber Girl on the project Save the Sea, uh, which for now is basically an attempt to collect money to buy a sea bin for the Dinya Marina. Uh, which is a sea bin. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept. It's an it's a little machine like a filter that filters out in generally trash, but mostly surface trash, which is plastic from the water. And and it's very popular all over the world right now to have those sea bins in in marinas and little ports, so that trash is being moved away or actually filtered out by the sea bin. And so we started. Uh, so we started negotiating with the marina in, in Gdynia in order to have it installed, even though we still don't have the sea bin. And I feel that, and I hope they're not listening, uh, but I feel that there is a little bit of hesitation on their side because it's additional work for them to take care of it, even though we're willing to help and they will have to find a good place for it. And if And what if that place could be used by a by a boat so then they don't get money from the boat that could be parked in the place where you have the sea bin and of course they need the the marina they need the, they they clean it so they take out the surface trash that they can see but they look from of from the standpoint of the marina so they want the marina to be clean not the baltic sea so if you have trash collecting in one corner of the marina and then overnight the wind changes and the trash is and taken away it, yeah. outside the marina. They don't care, like they're clean, right? It doesn't yeah. matter that the trash was moved into the Baltic, into the Gulf of Gdańsk. Uh, so the argument of the sea bin being there and collecting the trash even overnight when the wind changes is not really that valuable to them, or at least not, all, not always. 
uh, of course we're, we're 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 talking and we're negotiating and i hope for the best and i hope uh you know we'll get it installed and everything will be fine but there's definitely a lot of work um getting all the people involved uh you know getting them on your side and understanding that you have to look broader not only at your little piece of of the ocean or the sea but you know if the trash is not even in your place it may be moving away and it's not a good thing so yeah so human yeah thanks for that yeah right. yeah i think it's just like it's very important to get people on the same page just with definitions if you talk about recycling and zero waste and things like that people have very different definitions and similarly if it's a project that first you say it's about collecting litter, but then you go into detail it, into what's the actual goal. And ultimately you want to get people to agree on the same overall kind of goal of, of, on the project. And they might have their smaller interests and focuses or, you know, even pressure from their PR on what they think it should be achieving. So yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. Um, okay, well, I think we can finish with the third question uh, on, uh, well, actually you can choose. You can choose which one you answer. I'll give you two options. One is simply your tips for a good, meaningful, impactful community um, action. So when do you think your time and money of your organization is best spent and the community action makes sense? Or you can also talk about, do you ever combine community projects with your other projects? So whether it's lobbying, whether it's policy, whether it's activism or research, do these ever cross over? And I'll just mention quickly that I remember what really stuck in my mind was a BBC series called War on Plastic for episodes. And in one of these episodes, there were two little girls aged maybe seven and nine who went to, to the headquarters of McDonald's, who went to the headquarters of Burger King, and you know, in a very brave way, were asking for meetings, obviously with their parents present as well, but were uh, starting a big petition on these chains removing the little plastic toys from the Happy Meals and all these kids-oriented menus. Whereas in, so, and it was okay for a big campaign that gathered hundreds of thousands of uh, signatures to be kind of led by kids. Whereas in Poland, I often, so there was this crossover of community and children and activism and pushing for policies. Uh, whether in Poland, I often see that kids project are, let's make a competition and we're gonna draw a fish that eats plastic, right? So it's often very, like you take it down and oh no, kids and activism or kids and policy. No, 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 that does never cross over. So that's just a, a, a story I wanted to bring in for you uh, uh, if you want to reflect on that. But yes, for the panelists, feel free to just choose if you want to give some of your golden tips or if, if you want to talk about these different areas ever crossing. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's very, it's very much actually interlinked uh, questions. And of course, when we're, when we're trying to work with, um, with some communities, uh, I think it's very important uh, that you also work or at least you support uh, developments on, uh, on other levels, like on regulation, on policy level, on uh, uh, like general uh, awareness raising of the society when it comes to plastic, because of course it's very difficult to uh, to make changes in, the, in, in in isolated community. For example, when you're working with schools, you also need to work with, uh, for example, Minister of Education. You also need to uh, to work with producers of um, uh, reusable caps. Uh, you need to work with parents and etc. And it's uh, very much uh, like interlinked. But I think that for us, one of them. Uh, like uh, reasons for success is that we are uh, we're trying to uh, apply like long-term approaches. That we're, when we're working with schools, for example, uh, it doesn't mean that we we just like uh, suddenly uh, came to schools with the idea to um, let's uh, let's uh, let's be plastic-free. No, we we've been working with them for many years. For example, on energy efficiency, on uh, water quality, on uh, uh, well, sustainable development in general. 
and then it's a kind of a natural development that okay now you've been working to this and that issues uh, let's let's start thinking about the modern challenge which is plastic or um, well maybe we will next we will be working with uh, with climate neutrality and etc i mean I think key is, uh, one of the key uh, reasons for success is trying to establish a long-term relations with uh, with your communities. For example, uh, we have another uh, another story of working with uh, churches and with par like uh, parish members in in different regions uh, of Belarus and trying to engage them into environmental work. Uh, it was um, first; it was just general uh, environmental topics, uh, biodiversity, uh, like protection of uh, local territories, but then we also tried to started to work with them on the plastic, on uh, artificial plastic flowers, trying to to change this habit when uh, when local people go with artificial plastic flowers to cemeteries and etc. But it it is only possible because you have this long term relations, or at least your organization and your approaches are known um, within the community. Because I think it's very difficult to uh, to get inside and to start uh, to bring some new ideas when when you are basically not known for for mm -hmm. people. Yeah, so building that trust in the relationship yep. yeah, absolutely. is the, rather than a short single action, you come in, you yes. leave, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Yeah, thank you. And Dominika, on your side? Um, I definitely have to agree with the long-term relationship and definitely working with your local community. Um, I live in Gdynia and I know Gdynia very well. So when I talk to people um, at our events or in our projects and classes who are also from Gdynia, we right away can relate like, oh, I know this part of the beach. So I know that you can see this type of trash there. And so they, they know that, be that beach too, they go there so they can relate to it and they start understanding where everything is coming from and, and how, you know, it's also their choices and their influence on their environment that they do. And I also believe that we have to work with whole communities and for example, whole families. Um, at the aquarium, we mostly te teach kids that um, that go to school, and then you know, with on the school trip, they come to the aquarium. Uh, but I think that we need to have projects, and we're turning towards those projects where they have to work long term with us, and they have to have their communities, for example, their parents or their friends, involved in those projects. Because otherwise, I feel if kids come to class, and yes, they understand that plastic is bad, they understand how to recycle, how recycling works or everything, but then they go home and, you know, their, mom, their mom asks them like, how was school today? Oh, it was fine, we learned about plastic. Oh, okay, here's your dinner. It was wrapped in plastic before I served it to you, you know? So they need to, so we need to work both with parents and with, with kids and students in order to have them um, involved not treat learning about plastic in the ocean as another homework that mm -hmm. you just do and you forget about it it has to be involvement of of whole families or or whole groups that just live together mm -hmm. and they have to make all the choices together yeah so for the real impact together, not, yeah, yeah you have to reach you have to reach more than your first target group but maybe broader yes. and broader if you want that impact and that switch in it it, as bad as it sounds, it should be like a like a pyramid scheme. You know, one person you talk to should recruit two more people, and then another person. So, you know, you need to get to to the community through, you know, working yes, with different with groups. larger groups. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks very much, and our time is up. Uh, so well, I'm afraid we won't be able to take any questions from our participants. There was one question from Elisaveta in the chat. If anyone has something on their mind, then feel free to write in the chat and our panelists maybe will find time and can, can type the answers there um, while we're preparing for the next part or during coffee break. We can give our panelists some homework for the coffee break for them to type back. Uh, so yes, thanks very much, Dominika and Evgeny. And I, and I hope that... Uh, the participants will, will take some of your experiences and observations 
uh, as you obviously are involved in, in many projects and uh, and yeah, we can visit the websites and learn because there is so much obviously that that we could still uh, talk about and explore. So thanks very much. So we will have a okay. presentation now with Maria Weber from Polish Ecological Club uh, about uh, results of their work. Um, so Maria, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Evgeny, for, uh, for your introduction. Uh, we want to uh, share, we Polish Ecological Club, want to share with you uh, our experience, one, our ex uh, experience from one element of uh, Plastic Free Ocean project. In the project, uh, our first concept was a conference resulting in innovative solutions in reducing plastic pollution. But while building the program and the methodology, we've decided to switch to brainstorming workshop as the more promising form. Next. In the open call on our media, social media, we invited young scientists and citizens, future decision makers, to have the opportunity uh, to develop innovative ideas to reduce the amount of plastic in our lives. The meeting took place to formulate proposals and to support policy changes in the Baltic Sea region as a region free of single-use plastic. Next, please. The method we've chosen was the Metaplan. Metaplan is based on four uh, questions. The first is uh, how it is, so uh, preparing diagnosis of the uh, situation at the moment. The, the next question, how it should be, so uh, showing the ideal situation. The third uh, the step uh, is a question, is answering question, why it is not like it should be. So the reasons uh, for the bad uh, situation. And the last question, what should be done to improve the uh, situation? So suggestions to solve the problem. Uh, the, the problem. Uh, we uh, uh, invited the moderators who were uh, scientific workers from Gdańsk University, uh, from Department of Chemistry, Law, Social Science, uh, Sciences, Politology, Economy. Among participants, we had students and graduates up to 30 years old, uh, representing chemistry, biology, pedagogy, philology, economy, pro environmental protection, uh, water management, uh, oceanology, social sciences, law. So the specialization in groups was really diverse and we wanted uh, to mix the group as much as possible uh, to, 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 uh, to make people work uh, hard in, in the uh, while uh, brainstorming. Uh, divided into smaller groups, providing variety of specializations in each group they were working with each moderator only for 15 minutes. It was a really speedy brainstorming because during these uh, 15 minutes they had to answer all four questions and invent uh, uh, solutions uh, the more uh, uh, the, the better. Uh, moderators directed, each moderator direct uh, the discussion uh, in uh, their field of uh, uh, interest. Uh, in the end, the group uh, presented. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the end, the group presented uh, uh, the most valuable, in their opinion, uh, results. Mm, uh, so, so not the, all the all results were they they they've chosen uh, by themselves what they thought was uh, the uh, was the best their achievement uh, during the uh, during the workshop. workshop. Uh, it was really hard, and after this uh, an hour and a half 
of uh, brainstorming that we really looked really ex exhausted, but uh, it was worth uh, working. The results, next slide, please. <coughs> the results, uh, next slide. Uh, in law, in uh, legal, uh, legal solutions, uh, uh, they stress unification of materials and uh, plastics. What is at the moment, uh, it doesn't answer the need, uh, they, uh, they said. Uh, they suggested greater control or compliance with the existing law. Uh, also, what was mentioned uh, today before, increasing for the product quality, uh, giving uh, the product a longer life and multiple use. Uh, financial, uh, even if it was a, a low group, they suggested some financial incentives like uh, tax breaks, grants, awards, also more uh, financing for research and uh, development. Next, please. Uh, for uh, from uh, chemistry and biology field, uh, they stressed uh, innovation at design at the first stage, uh, not in the, at the produ uh, production. Uh, of course, recycling uh, support whatever support uh, the, uh, for the new technologies. Public education was uh, was underlined and was found uh, uh, interesting and uh, needed. Uh, 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 stressing on the recyclable and compostable uh, plastic, uh, creation the technology for collecting plastic and also uh, microplastics. Next, please. Uh, from uh, economic groups, again standardization, standardization of packaging first of all. Uh, they underlined uh, spreading the concept of a sharing economy, sharing goods, uh, not buying for uh, themselves. Uh, bio should pay off. And uh, the subsidies and reductions, uh, financial subsidies and financial reductions for those using alternatives to plastic. And the last group, next please, Zagruska. Sorry, I don't know what's the problem. So, uh, so I have a bit, uh, it's, it's not nice when you don't see it, but, but I can talk, oh, no, next. No, one before. So, so no, 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 no. So uh, leave it, leave it. What was in the screen? No, I can talk with the, the politics. Yes, the poli one group more, uh, and the politics group of politics and uh, society. Uh, they stressed uh, intensifying public dialogue with the, with all the stakeholders. Uh, entrepreneurs, uh, society experts, uh, research funding again, uh, unification of standards again. So from different groups uh, uh, were uh, very similar, very much like uh, the solutions. Uh, moderators, we asked the moderators uh, to prepare recommendations uh, uh, for the decision makers to uh, to send to to and to it's what you you can see uh, in the screen. But uh, the next, if you can, it would be very valuable if we could see the last. Here it is. Uh, it's uh, so the um, the recommendations we put in a more graphic uh, uh, way. Uh, to present all everywhere and to everyone. The, the aim and the target uh, are to, to, uh, to show in such a way was to show that only holistic, only uh, as wide as possible approach 
may uh, we may achieve using uh, such an uh, such an approach, a mutual approach, uh, we can achieve uh, success. It's uh, as you see, uh, these are uh, is visible how common and how from a variety point of view points of view uh, 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 solutions come together they are common uh, they come from uh, different points of view but uh, but uh, uh, go to the same uh, to the same uh, to the same result uh, so that's the, that uh, our nutshell uh, the, the, the poster, and we hope it will be enough readable and enough understandable uh, for the uh, for the uh, all public uh, where uh, we can uh, we will present uh, our set of posters. As, as you see here is number six. So there is a set of six posters describing the problem of uh, of uh, single-use uh, plastics. Uh, we are really happy uh, to present our contribution, uh, contribution how to minimize the impact of plastics on the world ocean today, uh, just in, uh, in the ocean week, during the ocean week. And uh, ho cross fingers and hope it will, our uh, results will be uh, applied, really applied. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria, and uh, congratulations with uh, results of your project. I think it's really very, very impressive, and uh, I could just share my personal like opinion because we uh, we also uh, like looked and uh, studied these posters in in our organizations. We definitely would like to uh, translate them into to Russian and to use in our work because I think it's very good. Uh, communication tool for uh, for public we're, we're so really, thank you very much. We're really happy thank you and uh, then we move to next presentation uh, isabel uh, from bund uh, germany uh, about the experience on best practice experience on reducing of plastic waste looking forward for your presentation isabel the floor is yours thank you can everybody see my screen is that all right Yes. Yes. All right. Then, um, yeah. Hello, everybody, and all the best from Germany here. I am here on behalf of the German project partner, BUND, or Friends of the Earth Germany. And throughout the project period, we have worked on a guideline to bring together all or well, most part of the work that is being done and has been done in the Baltic Sea region to combat plastic waste and marine litter. Um, there we go. Um, because with the end of each great project, such as ours today, many ideas and successful approaches also must sadly come uh, to an end. But what has been learned from that work and experience should not end up in another drawer somewhere and be forgotten. So together with the working group for municipal uh, requirements of the German Round Table Against Marine Litter, um, this guideline, sampling many best practice experiences and examples was developed. And after we had a very valuable feedback here in Germany, and we were really eager to make this kind of document also available uh, for the Baltic Sea region, at the same time adding local examples, of course. Um, so actually, um, in this guideline, you can find, find many ideas and stories that have been presented here today as well and um, are an outcome of the Plastic Free Ocean project. So um, yeah, all in all, we just wanted to prevent that the wheel keeps on being in reinvented and therefore share our, uh, share our uh, know-how and, and experiences. Um, the end product was then this guideline that you can see here um, called how municipalities can reduce the use of single-use plastics on a local level, but um, Anyway, this guideline should not only be helpful for municipalities, but also for any NGO or any committed uh, citizen then um, that is looking for inspiration or ideas um, on how to get engaged to um, work against the plastic pollution. So today I want to share with you shortly um, how the guideline is structured and how you may use it for your own interest. So basically, 
Um, the guide consists of 11 chapters that each focus on certain literary items that are frequently found in the Baltic Sea region and in total include 36 options of action um, and a total of 65 best practice examples. Um, the first chapter is on reusable solutions for restaurants and events and therefore includes best practice examples on, for example, reusable coffee to go cups, um, but also on return and reuse systems for takeaway food containers, um, as well as ideas on how to encourage the bring your own culture um, for takeaway food or even infrastructure, which we heard about earlier, such as portable industrial dishwashers to enhance the use of reusable options in the first place. Um, then the second chapter is on the enhancement of no waste solutions in the daily routine and thereby reducing the use of single use packaging, um, especially also in the retail sector. So that you can find ideas on several options of action for deli counters or for the fruit and vegetable section of the retail sector or in farmers markets. Um, but also the topic of making tap water and the possibility re to refill your um, reusable water bottle um, options more available. Then the third chapter is on cigarette butts, which we've heard about as well today, and how they can be managed by the sea or in the cities so that they don't end up in the sand or later in the water. We'll have a very short look into that chapter later. Um, and then the fourth chapter is on the reduction of residues from fireworks, including ideas for alternatives or how to reduce the impact of the residues from the explosives. Um, the fifth chapter is on the rather difficult issue of balloons, which we talked about as well, and a few ideas in how their impact or whether their use can be reduced. Um, followed by chapter six, which treats the issue of plastic bags that are used for dog waste <laughs> and um, very frequently are left behind in the nature by the dog owners. Um, here you can find ideas such as plastic bags in signal coloring to draw more attention so that they don't throw them out in the green nature um, that easily or even alternatives uh, made of paper. Um, yeah. Then following in the seventh chapter, um, it's about the issue of waste management by the beach, um, mainly focusing on the kind of construction and features of garbage bins um, that can be found along coastlines. In chapter eight, it is um, in so far interesting as it treats the topic of certificates and labels that mark products or even places with um, less plastic and include the examples, for example, um, from plastic conscious holiday accommodations that have been established, for example, along the German coast of North the Northern North Sea. Yeah, so um, also very interesting to look into. On the chapter nine, um, we give an input on how municipalities can work towards a plastic-free procurement in their own institutions, um, and at the same time set an example. In chapter 10, many ideas of awareness raising come together. This topic, uh, well, this topic is hardly to be separated from any of the other chapters um, and should always be part of any um, endeavor we, we take um, account on, but here you can find some rather outstanding best practice examples um, that we've had already implemented in the Baltic Sea region. And lastly, um, chapter 11 that focuses on the organization of support uh, of cleanup events or activities that um, I will um, take a short look into now. So, oh no, this isn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Bad. One second. Can you still see the full screen? See it now? Sound good? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, so if we take a closer look into um, each chapter, then we can find um, the same repeating structures. So every topic starts with a here with a short introduction into the issue and show some facts from the Baltic Sea region um, and mostly addressing why this issue is relevant. And then next up, you can find the options of action, um, which basically summarize what type of action can be undertaken to work on that issue. And as you can see, every of those um, 
actions is colored differently. This way you can then easily identify all the best practice examples that follow up um, and have been already um, translated successfully into reality. Which brings us then to the last part of every chapter, the best practice examples. Um, uh, they are a very colorful compilation of best practice experiences, which are mostly were possible visualized with some pictures. And every text includes a link which leads you to a web page with more detailed information, mostly in English, but unfortunately, some information is only available in the local language of where the idea was realized. But um, we were talked about that um, Google Translate can help out on some parts of that. So here in the example of the last chapter on facilitating cleanup events and activities, you can see a rather short introduction followed by three options of action, infrastructure, support, and events. And if you then take a closer look into the best practice examples, you can find specific ideas. So for infrastructure, for example, they are the Konstofjotas, <laughs> unfortunately, an example from the North Sea region from the Netherlands. Um, that offer beach visitors the possibility to take bags that they can fill with waste found on the beaches while they take a walk. And when they return the filled bags, they get a free drink. In this example, then local restaurants and cafes work closely together with the local municipality that um, where the municipality um, pays, for example, for um, the waste um, recycling. Another example of that kind um, are um, the green kayaks, which are you supposed to see now. Um, uh, here you can rent out kayaks um, that are um, financed by the municipality. Um, you don't have to pay any fees for the rent. And if you collect waste um, in a pre-installed container on the kayak, which you can see here in the middle, then um, yeah, you have a nice canoe trip without um, having to pay for it and even doing a good thing for the environment. From the second option of action support, you can see an example from Stade in Germany, this one right here, um, where the municipality encourages their citizens to clean ups, uh, to do cleanups by reimbursing them for every, every cause they um, encounter or even financing refreshments and a snack during the event. And I think we are all familiar with the option of organizing cleanup events. You can here find an exemplary um, best practice example with the Baltic Cleanup Cup. Um, next. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's the same repeating structure. So here the one on cigarette butts, a rather longer um, introduction than the options of action as you can install public ashtrays, you can enhance portable ashtrays or do awareness raising. Um, and then you can find different best practice examples on each of these actions with uh, many different ideas. Yeah, so that's so far on the guideline, but we also worked on the issue of microplastics during this, um, during this um, project. So I wanted to um, tell you that we've uh, made available information and background papers on microplastics from cosmetics and self-care products, um, as well as a consumer guide, also on synthetic textiles, artificial turf, and also microplastics from tires. So make sure to check that out on the Plastic Free Ocean web page as well as um, our um, guideline. And I hope uh, you find it helpful and thank you. Thank you very much, Isabel. And uh, also congratulations with this very, very good product. Uh, I'm sure many of us would like uh, to translate it into our national languages and to, to use it in, 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 in our work. Uh, uh, just to, could you, could you repeat if this uh, guideline is already available on your website? Uh, and, if, and if yes, could you please uh, share the uh, address in the chat so everyone could uh, yes. have a link? Um, we still have to upload it on the CCB webpage, and as soon as um, that's available, I'll also link it in the presentation that will be uploaded. Um, but then you can also find it on our webpage where I'll put you the, um, the link to the publications in the chat. Okay, thank you very much, Isabel. Um, 
yeah now actually uh, i have to to make a presentation i will try to make it very short because uh, i think we are a little bit uh, run out of the time and uh, we still uh, will have one moderated uh, breakout rooms and uh, basically to discuss the uh, the experience which we have learned today and how we can use it further uh, in, our, in our campaign. So I will, just a second. Do you see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. So I will, uh, I will try to uh, reflect a little bit on our attempt to change uh, the narrative of, um, of of plastic topic in Belarus. And basically, uh, this is uh, what you've seen as a background. Uh, unfortunately, the situation is still quite, um, could be quite, uh, quite typical, quite visible in many uh, of our cities. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I would explain that we have uh, already some differences now. This is a very typical shop uh, in one of our uh, central uh, markets in Minsk and you could see that almost everything, every every type of product, such uh, like uh, some give you stableware, uh, like oil, almost everything is made uh, from plastic or in plastic packaging and most of it uh, will go to, uh, to landfills. And unfortunately, for uh, most of people, the situation is extremely typical, is extremely, let's say, uh, understandable. And um, we did uh, some a kind of a survey, um, uh, short talks with the visitors in the market, and almost for everyone, like, it's fine. What's the problem? When we asked about what do you think about, uh, about all, the, all, all, all these products. Uh, so our approach, uh, what uh, which we have taken in our organization, and I already explained it a little bit uh, during the discussion, is to try to work with specific communities because it's very difficult to work with the general public. Of course, we are trying to uh, to well, to have an influence on uh, on everyone, but then we are trying to split this big uh, like amount of people by different uh, target groups. And for example, for ourselves, we identified cafes in uh, in in cities of Belarus, and we are trying to promote them to uh, to use reusable cup as a way to encourage um, the clients uh, to come back to the cafe if they pro uh, provide discounts for um, uh, for people. And this uh, and this uh, uh, campaign, my cup is uh, at the moment is quite uh, uh, quite popular. Uh, with the average uh, discount rate, twenty uh, percent uh, for the cafe product, uh, which is uh, which is quite good. Um, I already spoke about schools. Uh, it was uh, our another target group, and uh, uh, we think that it's a very strategic way for us to engage young people and uh, very young people uh, into plastic discussion. Because uh, until they uh, they do something themselves, uh, themselves uh, until they use uh, the reusable bottles, reusable cups, it's almost um, it's almost uh, impossible uh, to teach them about uh, environmental consequences of plastic and uh, just produce some social ads and etc. Because if they if they don't uh, implement it themselves, uh, then it's uh, almost useless. Uh, I spoke about canteen. Uh, I said that we uh, started to work with churches, uh, with church parishes, and we also identified some critical, uh, critical points where uh, they can um, try to switch from a single-use plastic into uh, multi-use um, uh, multi-use materials, or they can uh, just uh, abolish, for example, artificial flowers uh, for cemeteries and start uh, promoting uh, like normal uh, flowers. Uh, this year, for example, we started to work with uh, several new parishes and provided them with um, small lining bags 
uh, which the uh, parish members can use in order to bring home um, bread from uh, from parish, this blessed bread, which is a kind of a tradition in, in, in many parishes. And it's also very like very small, uh, very small step, but uh, for many people it's something practical. And from the small practical steps, they are trying to, well, to develop themselves into into new uh, habits. We're trying to work with uh, different uh, stakeholders, including international stakeholders like UNDP in Belarus, and uh, try to invite other uh, big organizations into the plastic debate, because we understand uh, that uh, our capacity uh, in fact, is very limited because, well, of course, we are quite active environmental organization, but we cannot do uh, everything ourselves. And even when we are trying to approach uh, like producers, retailers, um, uh, large scale business, quite often we are well. Of course, we can manage to to get uh, to get a communication, but. Uh, it's very rare when, uh, for example, a big retailer will change as a internal policy uh, because of our demand or because of uh, information which is brought by environmental NGOs. And for us, one of the way uh, how we can try to uh, to enhance, to strengthen our voice is uh, to bring uh, other stakeholders and stakeholders which are recognized in the country. For example, um, well, so far, uh, like UN and UNDP, uh, they recognized as a kind of uh, important stakeholders by many of uh, commercial companies, business. Uh, well, they, uh, they know that it's international organizations, respected, and etc. And one of our approaches is to bring, um, uh, for example, UNDP or UN uh, national office head to speak about plastic pollution, to invite uh, organizations from commercial sector to, to do something. Uh, so we launched this initiative, uh, UNDP Plastic Platform. It was launched by, by UNDP last year, and uh, uh, we think that it's, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good way uh, to engage business, to engage other partners, so we we expect that uh, this year and uh, next year it, it will be it will bring some uh, results. I spoke to, uh, already a little bit about policy yesterday. I just bring some examples, but for us it's of course important. But what is really uh, interesting, and uh, this is actually the key, uh, I would say the key message from this presentation, is uh, that. We, we observe an increased level of uh, public engagement, especially from um, like young people uh, or relatively young people, um, those who work for um, modern companies, for IT companies. So we, uh, we started to provide uh, public lectures, uh, like for example, we, uh, we had from, uh, from Indra in, uh, in Lithuania. So we're trying to do it in Minsk, but for like, for big uh, for big audiences and in cooperation with one of um, uh, very popular uh, web uh, resources uh, in Belarus online so you could see that for example uh, this year in 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 March we had a public uh, lecture of uh, Maria Suma who is our campaigner on, 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 on zero waste and it was uh, specifically focusing on plastic and uh, they got 52,000 of viewers of, uh, of of this presentation, which is also translated online, and it's well, it's it's quite big for uh, at least for for Belarus. So we see that um, many people are very very much engaged, and uh, for them, uh, this plastic topic become a kind of a uh, they own. Um, well, I wouldn't say battle, but a kind of a uh, opportunity to. To do something practical, so they can refuse, uh, for example, single use. They can promote um, uh, reusable cups, reusable materials in the offices, and we see that it's a growing demand. And actually, for me, this is the biggest, um, I would say, source of optimism in a, in our work because I understand that it's extremely difficult to work with policy level. It's extremely uh, difficult to 
to work directly with companies to you know, to make them to persuade them to switch uh, like from single use but once we get a lot of uh, people like energetic people motivated people to do something then basically um, well i feel that our uh, our work uh, partly is done we, we can just support them provide them new information etc but uh, if the same people are motivated then everything should be okay so basically that's it uh, what i wanted to share in this presentation that we observe some uh, some shifting, maybe um, not very quick, but we uh, definitely a shift in a narrative in, in this plastic discussion when uh, more and more people uh, they understand that it's a problem and they go for uh, alternatives and they go for uh, some uh, they choose uh, they choose another lifestyle and they are uh, uh, able to promote this lifestyle in uh, in their daily life. So, thank you very much. And now I switch uh, into like moderator's role. Um, I would like I would like to also to allow maybe one two questions uh, from the group before we uh, break out for the uh, final. Uh, Break, uh, breakout session. Maybe any one of you have some questions uh, to to presenters, so you can raise your hand or uh, write a question uh, to the chat. Do we have any? Uh, I see none. Well, um, well, actually, I have a quick, uh, maybe also a quick question to Isabel uh, again about uh, your uh, your work with municipalities. Do you already know how many municipalities are, are trying to implement uh, your advices and uh, your approaches, which you described in the guideline? And do you have any kind of a uh, you know maybe a labeling or certification system in Bund when you can? like uh, well, basically publicly said that okay this municipality is doing well in uh, in, in elimination of single-use plastic um i mean most of those best practice examples come from municipalities that even have developed those or um have been the first ones to implement them um there are several different municipalities but for example on the Baltic Sea coastline in the city of um, Rostock, there's a lot um, going on against um, the use of single-use plastic, including um, um, yeah, a round table with um, uh, joining for, joined by the municipality, but also by um, organizations and businesses um, in the city. They have um, um, enforced legal uh, requirements um, for um, um, against single-use plastics on their um, public festivals. Um, and so it is hard to count, um, but um, um, yeah, there are many. <laughs> so there's a lot of things going on that can be, um, yeah, just still multiplied by other municipalities. And um, as it concerns with the, for example, the certificates or the labels for um, plastic, um, conscious uh, holiday accommodations. This was a project developed on the island of Fur on the northern, uh, on the northern, the north sea coast, um, which uh, my colleague Dorothea is now implementing on the um, islands, um, on three different islands um, on in the North Sea as well, um, which has been very successful because she has been able to connect this, um, yeah. Re uh, uh, certification process along with the um, um, authorities of, oh yeah, she's raising her hands. Maybe she can tell you something about that. That would be cool. Okay, please, Dorothea. 
Yes, um, yeah, I can say something a little bit on that. Um, so we, um, our colleague on FUR has developed this idea of the plastic conscious holiday homes and we are now um, trying to, well, we actually um, develop that further and work together with National Park Authority. And that way it is, they, they have a criteria for, um, for part, for, for different um, companies and, um, um, people from hotels and so on to to become partners so they have to fill out a form and agree on sp specific goals that they want to achieve and um, they kind of they before this was really a rough thing about like saving energy and so on and now they implemented specific topics on um, cutting down plastic and also that um, holiday homes um, have like refillable water bottles or refillable cups and stuff in the in the houses so that it's easier for people to switch to um, plastic conscious living while on holiday so that's the idea behind that okay thank you very much uh, thank you uh, thank you also for all moderators and all uh, participants um, uh, of the breakout groups. I think it was also very good um, in a very reflection on uh, on presentations which we had. So we are um, uh, entering into the final, very final uh, part of the conference. Um, and uh, we thought that maybe project partners uh, would like to give some uh, concluding thoughts, concluding ideas. Uh, however, I understand that um, perhaps many of your uh, reflection and many of your ideas was already shared uh, during presentations or during uh, presentation from breakout groups. So it's um, not really obligatory, but the, if you would like to uh, to say some uh, reflection on to uh, underline some of uh, um, maybe some of your thoughts, uh, please go ahead. Uh, just uh, maybe raise your hand, or actually, if you, I think many of you uh, don't have an option of raising hands, so just please like go ahead and uh, and, and and share your thoughts, and then we will conclude. So. I just would like to say thank you to all of the participants of this conference and to all of the members of uh, Plastic Free Ocean Project. Uh, about myself, I can really say that now I am motivated and inspired to do more action in future. And now I can see some way how I can do this. So thank you for very much for inspiration, for good examples. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Who's next? I can go next. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, on behalf of UND, um, I think it was really valuable to exchange all that has been done in so many different countries where we haven't had a lot of um, uh, exchange of um, know-how and everything for a while and now it's really good to have heard what has been going on and to um, see that there are many issues issues and many points to be um, attacked in the fight against plastic pollution so thank you very much for these last two days thank you very much isabel and for uh, of course thank you very much for your work i think many of us will will use uh, your results in the, in our future work and i can see aya's hand aya yeah uh, yes uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me work it was uh, definitely very meaningful day for me and uh, I think we learned uh, many times today that we are on the same page, actually, on single plastic issues. And uh, the most important value regarding this conference is this opportunity to learn continuously and together with our collaboration in this project and for beneficial future, I would say. And all the experiences we discussed here were very interlinked. And, and there are one of the success keys, I think, is to establish those long-term relations with, uh, within ourselves, with uh, interested parties. Uh, so the work should be continued. And 
I heard today that there is an optimism seen in Belarus, and I think that we really see this optimism for future. So that's why we are involved in, in, in this project that we hope for a better future. So thank you very much all of the participants. I really enjoyed being here and exchanging experience and learning a lot. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I would like to thank you all to all partners and also to moderators of our beta groups. I think <laughs> Uh, with that way, we uh, got uh, some uh, new opinions and new thinkings of, of other people around the Baltic Sea. So that's nice. And I think that uh, we uh, can stop uh, our work by the project uh, that should be continued for sure. And maybe it uh, will came from the project to our mission. <laughs> maybe mission possible also. Thank you. Thank you, Agnieszka. Yeah, and I would like also to echo that. Uh, echo that. I think it was very good um, today. With, uh, it was a really very good representation of uh, like different approaches and different experiences because. Um, of course, all of us, uh, well, at least my impression was that uh, like every partner is working uh, in the same field, of course, but uh, every presentation had its own like peculiarities, its own uh, characters. And uh, it's it's obvious that we have like a little bit different approaches and a little, a little bit different priorities uh, in our work with plastic, like uh, for someone, it's uh, important now to work more with incineration as a, like a final treatment. For someone, it's more important to work with municipalities. Someone is keen on uh, education and engagement, and it's it's really for me it makes a strength of CCB as a network, which uh, which deals with so great variety of issues and uh, well, as I think all, uh, all of us are interested to to continue this work and uh, of course we will also try to do um, well, try to do our best to find new uh, new resources and new uh, opportunities to continue this uh, this work with them uh, within CCB so yeah I would like also to thank everyone for for contribution because actually it's not it's not really organizers who who did this conference but it's everyone who who participated who presented who shared the experience who asked questions it's uh, everyone everyone result let's say so thank you very much uh, so do we have anyone else who would like to well, to say any final remark uh, i would like to say uh, i'm not I'm not participate a lot in the discussion, but uh, I was happy to hear that uh, we raised the question of incineration, incineration, and uh, especially um, in the context of plastic, it's very important because, as I had, that uh, because of COVID, uh, a lot of incinerator company uh, provide the uh, incineration like. Uh, opportunity for solving problem with COVID on plastic and it's I think it's very important also maybe in the future uh, to to discuss uh, incineration uh, like one of the critical point in waste manage in uh, plastic management also I think it's thank you Lisa for raising this topic uh, during the conference from me especially <laughs> thank you Marsha Okay, otherwise, thank you, thank you all very much uh, again for participation yesterday and today's and uh, we will uh, make all presentations uh, available on PDF and uh, on CCB website and also uh, more and more publications and uh, materials from uh, from the Pro Plastic Free Ocean project are also becoming available on CCB website. So please don't uh, don't forget to use this opportunity to uh, to share experience and also to to use uh, experience of others. Uh, and we will inform you about uh, next uh, events and next uh, 
opportunities uh, within plastic work uh, in, in CCB network. And also let me uh, thank you uh, organizers from CCB Secretariat, uh, staff Federica, Mikhail, who is not uh, here with us today, Maria, uh, and others who supported a lot uh, in preparation of this uh, event. Because I think uh, for all of us, it's still a little bit uh, challenging uh, this uh, online environment, and of course we are used more to like physical meetings. But it's it's something new. <laughs> so thank you very much.